All right, let's work another problem, at least one more from chapter three. This one's a little bit different than the other two I've worked. So in this problem, we have air, and the air is cooling. So we have a heat transfer out of the system. And as this air cools, this piston either moves to the left or to the right. We don't know yet. What we want to find from this problem is the work done. Is it done to the system? Is it taken out of the system? Is it positive or negative? Some assumptions we're making, we're, make, we're saying that the system is a closed system. We're assuming that this piston is moving very slowly during this process, so we're going to neglect acceleration. We're also neglecting any frictional forces, and we're assuming that the spring force varies linearly. So what I'd like to start doing here first is let me go ahead and draw a free body diagram of the piston here so we can get a better idea of the pressures acting on this system. All right, so here's the uh, piston body. So on the inside, we have a pressure on the inside of this chamber. This is a pressure times an area. On the right side of this, we have a force of the spring that's pressing on this boundary. Another force, so pressure times area is a force, so keep in, remember that a Pascal is a Newton per meter squared. So if we multiply the, pre the pressure by an area, we'll obtain a force. So the spring force acts to the left. We also have a, another force acting to the left, which is the atmospheric pressure. Okay, so this is our free body diagram. Now, if we wanted to describe how pressure varies in this chamber as the piston changes its position with time, we would use the force, and this is coming back from to uh, statics and dynamics. Hopefully, uh, you're either taking those or you remember what f principles used in those. In those classes, one of the foundational principles is F equals to MA. And I'm going to use vector symbols here on top of acceleration and force. Now remember, our second assumption states that this is a slow process, that we don't have any acceleration happening. So if we have no acceleration, A is equal to zero. So some of the forces acting on this free uh, body here are equal to zero. So basically, we have a statics problem. Now if we balance the forces acting on this, and keep in mind this is the area of the piston for both cases, so this is area of the piston, I'll use a P to denote that. So some of the forces on this system are positive direction, and let me get my coordinate system here. So we have Y, positive Y and positive X. So pressure times area of the piston minus force of the spring minus P atmosphere times area of the piston and that's all equal to zero. If I divide all of these now by area of the piston divide this one by area of the piston divide this one so zero divided by area of the piston is zero still all right. So after dividing through by the area of the piston, we would have pressure is equal to, or I'm sorry, pressure minus force spring over area minus P atmosphere is equal to zero. And one rearranging one more time, we have pressure is equal to atmospheric pressure plus for spring over area of the piston. Okay.
So here's our relationship for pressure. Now, the reason I did this, and this may be more, made more clear here, is the reason I did this was because to define and to determine how much work is coming out of this system, we are integrating the amount of work from points one to point two. So if we integrate the amount of work, and remember we're talking about this boundary work that's occurring, our definition that we had put together last time was that if we integrate from V1 to V2, and this is P dV, and you see here on the left hand side I use a delta symbol to denote that it's dependent on the process and here on the right hand I use a d as a derivative because it's a volume is a point function work depends on the path that, it, that this process follows volume depends on the different points so it's a point function and we use a d alright so if we expand this formula what we get stuck with is in our previous example pressure was constant now pressure is changing as the position of the cylinder moves from one location to another so how do we take into account that pressure change well we just de derived or developed a relationship for pressure in this equation so I'm going to substitute this relationship that we developed into this integral. So, as I integrate from V1 to V2, I'll have pressure is equal to P atmospheric, and remember this is pressure in the chamber, plus force spring divided by area of the piston. And that's all integrated with respect to volume. And I draw my, vo my Vs for volume with a line through them because later in the class we'll be talking about velocity and that can get confusing. All right, so what do we do now? Well, in this equation here, we know what P atmosphere is, we're assuming it's 100,000 pascals. We know the area of the piston. We don't know the force of the spring because it's changing. It's changing linearly. So how do we determine how it changes linearly? Well, let's go back and let's do some algebra to figure out how we can describe how it changes linearly. So. I'm going to plot how the force looks with respect to volume here. So we have volume on the x-axis, we have force in newtons on the y-axis. So at this point, point zero zero, and this is in meters cubed here, point zero zero two, and this is point zero zero three meters cubed. At point zero zero two, we have a force of zero newtons. At point zero zero three, we have a force acting on this of nine hundred newtons. So this is all in newtons. So our force varies linearly. The line may be may be crooked, but I assure you that this is. Uh, a linear change of force. All right. Um, at any given point on this line, we'll have an x point, which is volume, and a y point that is force. So now you got to really think back far to when you took algebra, and we're going to use the point slope formula to come up with an expression for how the spring changes the force of the spring changes linearly with the volume. So the point slope formula is this y minus y1 equals the slope times 
x minus x1. Keep in mind here, y is our force, x is our volume. We don't know the slope, so let's find the slope of this line really quickly. The rise over the run, so the rise is 900. The run is the difference between 0 0.003 and 0 0.002, so that's 0 0.001. So that's the slope of this line. All right, so rewriting this, so let's go back. Rewriting this, this is going to be the force of the spring. minus y1, which is 0, our initial point, is equal to 900 divided by 0 0.001 times x, which is our volume, minus x1, which is our initial point, which is 0 0.002. So finally, our spring force is equal to 900 over 0 0.001 times V minus 0 0.002 and this is our expression for the spring force which we can now plug back into our equation over here So doing that, we can now complete our integration or, or our uh, calculation of work. All right, so let me continue. So we've, def we've defined that work from 1 to 2 is the integral from V1 to V2. of the atmospheric pressure and now we can plug in our relationship that we developed for force of the spring so this would be 900 divided by 0 0.001 times V minus 0 0.002 and this is all divided by the area of the piston which we can replace here with the actual numerical value so the area of the piston is 0 0.018 meters squared alright so what we can do here is start plugging in our numbers oh and this is all integrated sorry with respect to volume so this is P dV all right, so work from one to two, volume one to volume two. The atmospheric pressure, remember we assumed is 100,000 pascals. We're adding um, these values here. So we have, uh, let me distribute these values. We have um, 900 times volume divided by 0 0.001 times 0 0.018 is 0 0.000018 and this is minus 900 times 0 0.002 divided by 0 0.00 Zero, zero, one, eight. All right, and we're integrating all of this with respect to volume. All right, what we will find out here after doing this is that this value here is equal to one hundred thousand. So this value here is equal to this value here. You'll see we have a minus sign in front of that. So this will cancel with that. All right? So what we have, what we end up with is 
integrating between V1 to V2 of 900 V divided by 0 0.000018 dV. Well, doing that, we can factor out the constant. Integrating the variable, we have V squared 2 over 2 minus V 1 squared over 2 plugging in these values this comes out to be negative 0 0.00000 0 0 0 0 0 0 and let's let's look at the units here too just to make sure we have the right units so the units of that are in this bracket here are going to be meters to the sixth the units of units of this denominator are going to be meters to the fifth right because we had um, you can track that back up here and 900 is going to be newtons um, you can track that back up to where we were uh, earlier. Let's see uh, this point zero. So this point zero zero one, remember, was volume, which is meters cubed, and this is eighteen hundred meters squared. So that's how we get meters to the fifth. All right. So um, we have meters to the sixth. This cancels out with all but one of these, and we have a newton meter. All right. So our work from 1 to 2, carrying out this calculation, you guys can see it's going to be negative 125 joules. So what does negative mean? Negative mean it does work on the air. as the air cools. So now I think it gives you a more full picture of what's going on. So we have here um, a piston that is cooling and as that piston as the air in that cylinder cools the piston moves to the left and that's that spring acts to compress that air more does doing work on that system as it cools and that volume inside of that chamber continues to uh, decrease now uh, what happens if we added heat to the system well we could have